Muse for you, awesome websites without code. Hey, what's up, Muser, and welcome to day 13 of building a chef website in Adobe Muse. Today we're on anchor points, so I'll click on the day 13 anchor points folder. And for today, we have the anchor points completed section, the .muse file, and we have the day 13 anchor points PNG. So I'll go ahead and double click on the PNG image. And today we're going to add the anchor points and we're going to link the desktop menu to the anchor points and we're going to link the tablet and mobile menu to the anchor points as well. So I'll go ahead and close this here. I'll go back to the root of the course folder. And the first thing we're going to do here is click on the chef website starting file .muse. So I'll go ahead and double click and I'll double click on the home page. So it looks good. So the first thing we're going to do before we add the anchor points, there's something we overlooked in yesterday's video tutorial that I quickly want to go over. So let's go to the plan view and let's go to the master page and double click on the master page. And we're going to be working with the footer here. So in yesterday's tutorial, one of the things that happened was that instead of having the the text formatted on the current breakpoints, the text was formatted across breakpoints. So when we change the text on one breakpoint, it changed the text on all the breakpoints. And one of the text that was changed was this footer text right down here. And it was aligned to the center for the 600, the 480, and the 320 break breakpoint. On the other breakpoints, I want it to be aligned to the left and not the center. So I'll go ahead and click on the 1600 breakpoint right up here. And we'll go to that text in the footer. We'll double click, select the text, and we'll go to the text panel here to the left and align it to the left here with the align options. Then we'll go to the, the 1280 breakpoint right up here. And we'll do the same for the 1280 breakpoint. So I'll zoom in, highlight the text is highlighted. I'll go to the text panel and align to the left. And we notice that the text isn't being formatted on all the breakpoints. It's just being formatted on the current breakpoint because we have the capital T selected here and not the four T's. So you'll want to make sure that when working on the website that this capital T is selected and not the four T's. All right, so I'll go back in here and I'll go to the text panel and align to the left. And then I'll go to the last breakpoint, which is the 840 breakpoint here and I'll align this text. Actually, I'll just zoom in and I'll go to the text panel and align to the left. Perfect. And that's it. On the 600 breakpoint, we do want the text to be aligned in the center because we have the text box within the center of the website. The same for the 480 and the 320. And I also brought in the text box a little bit so it's not going off the page here at the bottom. All right, looks good. So now let's go back to the plan view and double click on the home page. So now we can start adding the anchor points. So if you're not familiar with anchor points, I'll go ahead and open the day 13 anchor points folder and I'll double click on the .muse file and I'll double click on the home page and I'll preview this website in the browser. So I'll go to file preview page and browser and I'll minimize Muse here in the background. So what Anchor Points allows us to do is that it allows us to link the menu items to different sections of the website. So if I click on About, we go to the About section. If I click on Nutrition, we go to the Nutrition section. And if I click on Recipes, we go to the Recipe section. So you can picture an Anchor Point here in the left-hand corner uh, for this section, and then we link the menu item to that Anchor Point. And then we have Blog, so we can see it scrolls down to that section. We have clients, I'll scroll back up, and we have contact. So we'll, we'll be adding the anchor points to the different breakpoints on the site and then linking the menu to those anchor points. So I'll go back into Muse, I'll go to the home page, and the first thing we're gonna do, I'll go ahead and click on the 1600 breakpoint. So we start on the 1600, and then I'll go to the layers panel here to the right and I'll create a new layer by clicking on this icon here. And here we have layer nine, so I'll double click and I'll rename this layer anchor, yeah, anchor points. 
and then I'll click OK. And now we have this anchor point layer. So with this layer, I want to bring it all the way to the top, right below header. So the anchor points should look like this. Header, anchor points, section one through six, and footer. Perfect. All right, so now I'll go ahead and select anchor points so that when we add the anchor points, it gets added to the anchor points layer. So now I'll close this here, and now let's begin adding the anchor points. So to add the anchor point, we go to the toolbar here to the left. So just click once, and now we have the anchor point on the place gun. And for this first anchor point, we're gonna place it right at the top of the website in the upper left hand corner and then we're going to rename the anchor to home so we want the name of the anchor to correspond to the menu items so that when we link the menu items we know what anchor to link the menu item to and this will be a bit more clear as we go through and add the anchor points so now i'll go back to the toolbar i'll select the anchor point again and this time we want to link it to the about section so we have this about us text so i'm going to link uh, place the anchor point here to the left and I'm going to rename it to about and you want to make sure that the anchor points are all the way to the left of the website and one way to make sure that they're all the way to the left is by selecting the anchor and then in the transform panel make sure it's set to zero all right so then I'll go to the anchor point tool again click the anchor point and I'll go down to the nutrition section place it right there I'll rename this to nutrition and looks good it's all the way to the left and i'll scroll down select the anchor point tool and i'll place this right up here right in the upper left hand corner of the recipe section and i'll rename this to recipes so the anchor point is right here in the upper left hand corner i'll zoom in a bit there that's a bit better and i'll scroll down the next section is our blog so i'll go to the anchor point tool and i'll place this here in the upper left hand corner rename this to blog and just make sure that it's positioned in the upper left hand corner of the, the our blog section. Then I'll go to clients, select the anchor point tool, place right up here in the upper left hand corner, rename this to clients. And I'll just make sure it's positioned there to the left in the upper left hand corner of the client section. And then we have the contact section, so I'll go to the anchor point, select the anchor point tool, and I'll place this in the upper left hand corner and rename this to contact. Click OK and perfect. Looks good. So those are all the anchor points we have there. Let me zoom out here. And now that we have the anchor points, I'm gonna go ahead and link the menu to the anchor points. So I'm gonna go to the plan view. I'm gonna go to the master page and I'm gonna go to the 1600 breakpoint right up here. So I'll click on the 1600 breakpoint and let me fill the browser fill so we have, so we can see the menu. I'll fill the browser fill, and now I'm gonna link this menu to the anchor points. So just click once on the menu, then click again to select the menu item, and then right up here in the hyperlink section, you'll notice we now have access to all of these different anchor points. So the home menu item, I wanna to link to home. The about, I wanna to link to about. The nutrition, I wanna to link to nutrition. The recipes menu item, I wanna to link to recipes. The blog, I want to link to blog, the clients, I want to link to clients, and then I'll select this text here. I'll hold down shift to select the background as well, and then I'll go to the hyperlink section and link this to contact. Looks good. So the 1280 has the same menu and the same button, the 960 as well. So all the anchor points are already linked. And then once we get to the 840 breakpoint, we have the mobile menu. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the accordion uh, tab here to bring the menu, bring down the menu. So here we have the tablet and mobile menu. So I'll go ahead and click on home, or click once into the accordion, click again, and then click again to select the menu, and then click one more time to select the menu item. Then go to the hyperlink section, and here select home. I'll go to about. Here I'll select about. Go to nutrition, select nutrition. Recipes, I'll select uh, recipes here. Clients, I'll select clients. And then contact, I'll select contact. And we're missing one menu item, which I believe is blog. So blog goes right under recipes. So I'll click into the menu, and then I'll select the menu item recipes. And then I'll click this plus symbol right below recipes to add an another menu item. I'll double click in here, and I'll call this blog, just like that. 
and then I'll select the entire menu and I'll make it a bit taller because we added that menu item just like that. I'll select blog right in here, the menu item, go to the hyperlink section and select blog. So now the, the menu and the tablet and mobile menu are linked to the anchor points. And I'll go ahead and change the browser fill back to white there. Okay, and now I'll go to the plan view, I'll go to the home page, and then I'll go to file, preview page and browser so we can see the site. Okay, and now if I click on about, it brings us to the about section. I can click on recipes and we go to the recipe section. So I'm gonna resize the browser and let's take a look at the mobile menu, the tablet and mobile menu. So I'll click on recipes and we notice it doesn't go right to recipes. It should go to the top here of the recipe section. And that is because on each breakpoint, we have to make sure that those anchor points are in the, in the correct position. So here I'm on the 1280 breakpoint and the anchor points all look good. They're in the correct position. I'll go to the 960 breakpoint and here we have to adjust the anchor points. So we notice here that the blog anchor point, instead of being in the upper left hand corner of the blog section, it's a bit higher. So you can select the anchor point and hold down shift to make sure it doesn't move left or right and just bring it down the page until it's in the left hand corner of the blog section. So I'll do that for the other anchor points. So the clients right here, it's a bit too high. So I'll bring this down the site and I'll hold down shift and I'll bring it in the upper left hand corner of the client section. And then we have the contact section and I'll bring it down lower as well. So with each, each breakpoint, you wanna make sure that the anchor point is in the correct position. So I'll go to the 840 breakpoint and we notice those anchor points need to be positioned differently as well. So I'll go ahead and reposition all the anchor points and once that's all done, um, I'll come back to the video. So you can go ahead and do that as well just put, reposition all the anchor points so that they're in the correct section of the site on each individual breakpoint. Okay, so I've just repositioned all the anchor points on all the breakpoints so that they're in the correct position relative to the section. So we see clients is at the top left of the client section, the blog section, we have the blog anchor point. So they're all in the correct position and in the correct section. All right, so I'll preview in the browser one more time. So we've added the anchor points, we've repositioned, and actually let me go up here to the home page. All right, looks good. And in the layers panel, if we go to the layers panel and we click the anchor points drop down, we have all the anchor points here so we can easy, easily select them if we need to edit any of the anchor points. So now I'll go to file, preview page, and browser. And I'll open the tablet and mobile menu and we can see it takes us to those different sections. Looks good, perfect. All right, and then the 1600 breakpoint, it goes to those different sections. So one thing you might notice is that we have to keep scrolling back up to go to the menu. Um, I'll just give a quick tip here in case you wanted to fix the menu at the top. I'll go to the plan view and then I'll go to the master page. And here on the master page, go ahead in the layers panel and click on the header section on the header layer and create a rectangle. I'll go to the rectangle tool and create a rectangle in the header. So that fills the entire header. And actually, let me go to the 960 breakpoint, or excuse me, the 1600 breakpoint right up here. I'll go to the rectangle tool and I'll create a rectangle in the header that fills the entire header. And then I'll make it the same color as the footer rectangle. So with the rectangle selected, I'll go to the fill option, select the drop down, select the sample color tool, and I'll sample the footer color here. So now this header color is the same as the footer. Then I'll go to the layers panel here to the right, bring down the header drop down and this new rectangle that we just created, bring it all the way to the bottom of the layer, just like that, looks good. And I could move this up for now, I'm not gonna move it up. I'm just gonna pin everything to the top of the, the website. So with this logo here, I'll click on the logo. I'll pin it to the top left. I'll click on the menu. I'll pin it to the pin to browser top right. So as you can see, I'm not using responsive pinning. I'm pinning the elements to the browser so they don't move. All right. And then the contact, I'll hold down shift to select the text and the background. And I'll pin this to the upper right as well. And this rectangle here that we just created, I'll pin it to the top center. 
So I'm just pinning relative to the side of the browser. So this is the upper left. This menu bar is in the top center, or this uh, rectangle is the top center. This menu is the top right, and this button is the top right as well. So you would have to do that with all of the elements on the different breakpoints. For now, I'm just doing it on the 1600 breakpoint as an example. So I'll go back to the plan view, go to the home page, and I'll preview in the browser. And if I click on the different menu items, it brings us to that section and the menu stays at the top. So that's using the pinning options within Adobe Muse. It's not responsive pinning, but it's pinned to browser. So when we use responsive pinning, we're pinning to the page. And when we're fixing elements to the browser, we'll use the pin to browser option. You can pin to the top left, top center, top right, bottom left, bottom center, or bottom right. Looks good. So I'll go back to the page and there we have the elements or the uh, pinned header here. And the logo is pinned, the menu is pinned, and the contact button is pinned. If we go to the different breakpoints, we'll notice they're not pinned. So we'd have to go to each breakpoint and pin the elements there. I would move this menu so it's more in the center of the rectangle here and the contact button as well. All right, so that is it for day 13 and anchor points. We've linked the menu here to the anchor points and the tablet and mobile menu to the different anchor points as well. All right, so I'll go back up here. Looks good. So tomorrow is day 14 and we're gonna be going over SEO or search engine optimization to make sure that the website shows up correctly in the search engines. And we're also gonna be adding a favicon to the website. Muse for you, awesome websites without code.